Um, for your display, this is going to be your, uh, you know, your resolution settings and your display settings for your monitor or your TV or whatever you have hooked up to your computer. Um, in my case, it's a you know 50-inch TV and it's you know on the other side of my space, so it's actually a pretty good size for as far away as I end up sitting from it. But um, and then uh, if you have multiple uh, monitors hooked up to your system, this is where you can change. I only have the one, uh, but if you had multiple, uh, you can change it. Uh, which one is the primary monitor? You can change their layout uh, so it'll appear, uh, for example, as another box here to the right side, uh, you know, uh, representing another monitor. And then if it's on the right, uh, what would happen is as you move your mouse cursor to the right side of the first monitor, and you move it off to the you know the edge the right edge of the screen it would appear on the uh, you know left side of the second monitor off to the right but you can change that behavior simply by moving them uh, adjacent so uh, if you wanted the one second monitor to be on the left side instead of the right you just drag the box over here to the left side and then uh, it would do the same thing except it would be on the left side of the screen and it would move off to the other monitor so um, a little bit easier to illustrate that if I had another monitor plugged in, but uh, but you get the gist of it hopefully there. Um, you can set it as active. Um, if you wanted to deactivate a monitor, you could. Uh, you know, usually that's more of a temporary thing. Um, like if you temporarily don't want to use a second monitor or whatever, uh, but you still want to leave it plugged in or you know that sort of thing, um, then you could turn that off. Um, and the, the main thing here, your resolution, um, this will be set by default. Uh, to what your recommended settings are for your particular device but if you want to change that higher or lower or you know potentially higher uh, in my case it's already up to the highest resolution that my monitor supports but uh, but you can do that here uh, you know common sizes 1600 by 900 that's 900p is what you hear about all the time uh, 1920 by 1080 is 1080p resolution um, you know, uh, 1280 by 720 is 720p, and so on and so forth. Um, it shows the ones that it generally uh, supports here. Uh, your monitor may not support these same ones. It may support even more. It may support less, uh, lower ones. It's just going to depend on the hardware. My laptop, for example, is pretty old now. Uh, its screen only ha goes up to 1366 by 768 uh, resolution, which would be somewhere in between these two. Here, but they don't uh, offer it on this particular uh, monitor or you know on this TV in this case um, they don't offer that exact resolution but uh, the monitor I used before that um, it maxed out at 1600 by 900 so um, it couldn't quite make it to 1080p but um, but that was pretty old hardware too at this point um, so if you want to change uh, what resolution your monitor is using you can um, you can do that here. The one potential advantage is of you know using a smaller resolution, maybe. Uh, for one thing, it would make things on your screen look larger. Um, it does give you less real estate to work with, but uh, on the other hand, it makes it easier on your hardware uh, to display things at a lower resolution. So if you just have like an onboard uh, video chip and you don't have a you know a dedicated video card, or if you have like really old hardware. And you're just using, you know, some basic stuff. Um, it might be advantageous, like for example, for for these resolutions, for example, it might be a better fit to go down to, you know, 720p instead of 1080p, or you know, even the 900p would be a, a little bit easier on the system to render everything than, you know, 1080. Um, so basically, the higher up in resolution you go the more demanding it is on your system to uh, produce, you know, the additional pixels and, the, you know, have it stay fluid and smooth and everything. Um, refresh rate comes into that uh, as well. There's some options here. If your monitor supports it, at least 60 hertz is, you know, that's usually the best. Uh, well, it just kind of depends. It gets really complicated, actually, and goes, like, really into detail. I've heard some things where they say, like, uh, you know, for optimization purposes like 45 hertz or something like that it could be even better than 60 potentially for you know especially if you're getting into like gaming and, and getting you know, optimal frame rates out of stuff and 
it, g it gets pretty you know uh, complex but but generally uh, 60 is a very common um, you know uh, frequency refresh rate to use um, and it says recommended so if you're not sure um, you know which ones to use it's okay to go to the recommended ones those are recommended for a reason it's because that's the what it would call the native uh, settings for your for your monitor and usually what that all what that means is that it was designed with that setting in mind for the uh, typical operation of it so um, so if you're not too sure what you want and you don't have a specific need to go to something else um, it's perfectly fine to just leave these at their default settings and you know you shouldn't have any issues typically speaking um, in most use cases with that so um, if you would like to rotate the monitor you can uh, you can set that here either counterclockwise clockwise or 180 degrees um, the only thing I can think of off the top of my head where that might be useful is if you have the kind of monitor that actually rotates uh, to orient itself vertically as well as horizontally so in portrait uh, orientation instead of landscape because um, there are some monitors that will do that uh, they swivel and you can put one you know basically up and down instead of uh, left to right and um, and then you may want to rotate uh, your display for that particular um, you know for that particular monitor you may want to do it you know counterclockwise or clockwise whatever uh, whatever you had originally you know compared like whatever direction you turned the monitor compared to how it was originally um, and you could do that as well from the setting here uh, it says use your interface scale so automatic is is the default uh, you can do normal or double so if you have a high uh, DPI capable monitor um, and you wanted to enable that this is how you would do it from here um, otherwise you most people will just leave that at automatic and you know it won't uh, need to mess with any of that uh, mirror displays is for when you have multiple monitors this is this option may limit resolution options so yeah so that does um so if you have say for example uh you have two monitors hooked up or you you know you have a laptop and you have a monitor plugged into it or whatever um it will if you check that mirror displays it will show the same thing on both displays so um, by default there are two separate displays and you can you know show you can have certain things show on one and not show on the other uh, but if you do mirror displays it will replicate what's on one display on your on your primary display and it will just replicate that on the other display as well but the downside there is like it said on the little tooltip here that uh, some this is a, this option may limit resolution options so for example if uh, if I use my laptop that only gets up to 1366 by 768 pixels for its resolution and I plug my uh, Sony 50 inch TV into it with an HDMI cable and I say I want to mirror displays on my laptop well what that will do is force this uh, you know the the TV the 50 inch TV that normally can be in 1920 by 1080 resolution it will force that down to 1366 by 768 because that's the max that my uh, laptop monitor can display and it may even force it lower than that because this particular monitor doesn't doesn't uh, show supporting 1366 by 768 so it may have to go all the way down to 1280 by 720 which is a common resolution that both uh, monitors would be able to handle um, and and that's because it's mirroring what was shown on the laptop so um, you know, and the best a laptop can do is, you know, whatever, uh, 720p or, you know, 768, whatever, whatever it is. Um, so, uh, in that case, you, you do want to be kind of aware of that if you're going to be using the mirror displays option. Uh, you either want two displays that can, you know, do the same resolution or else you're just going to have to have one adapt to whatever the uh, less capable one uh, can do. So... Um, but that's it's a good way to be able to show the same thing on you know multiple screens if you need to um, and then down at the bottom here you can do detect displays so you can click that and then you can see it's this it's talking about this little box up here in the corner to say hey this particular monitor right here is the Sony 50 inch you know HDMI it's on the HDMI zero connection um, and so that's just to tell you like which monitor you're looking at um, which display you you know which display is which basically 
Um, you can reset to default if you make some settings and you decide, oh, well, I didn't, you know, I kind of messed those up and I don't remember what the original refresh rate was at or whatever. And you can just click that and it will go back. And then the apply button will apply any changes that you make in here. And it will ask you, so does the display look okay? The display will be reset to its previous configuration in, you know, a countdown of seconds here. And you can choose between either restore previous configuration or keep this configuration. Uh, so if it looks good and you want to keep the changes, you can do keep this configuration. If it doesn't look good or if you can't see the screen after 12 seconds times out, it will go back to restore previous configuration. And I'll just let it sit here so you can see what that looks like when it times out. Um, because sometimes you'll make a change and it will not, uh, you know, look good on the other monitor. Sometimes it won't even display at all. It'll just be a black screen or whatever. Um, and that's sort of a fail safe, that, that timer that counts down and it will just revert back to what you had before because it knows that that was at least functional, whatever you had before. So, um, and over here, there's a settings tab on the side. It says disable automatic screen rotation. So select this option to disable automatic screen rotation on hardware equipped with supported accelerometers. Um, so yeah, that's, I mean, that's the default behavior. Um, if you needed to rotate the screen again, you can just come in here and do it manually if you need to. Um, but if you didn't want to disable the automatic screen rotation, like if you wanted it to automatically rotate uh, when you rotate the monitor or whatever um, you could uncheck that and it would try to you know do it uh, based on how you have things set up so uh, and then this other option here says enable fractional scaling controls and it's an experimental setting it's trying to warn you about so um, it says select this option to display additional layout controls for per monitor scaling so um, so what that will do is instead of one X, it will show like less than one. It'll say like, you know, one half or one quarter or whatever um, for different scales or, and it will go up by uh, incremental amounts there. So um, if you want to play around with that, you can. I think I did like once in the past just to see what it did. And I ended up changing everything back to the default anyway. So, um, but if you need that functionality or you want to, uh, you know, experiment with experimental functionality, then, <laughs> then you can go ahead and toggle that on if you'd like. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn even more, you can find my books at bookstoread.com slash Jonathan. That's books, the number two, read.com slash J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N.